David here with Big Boot on Pens, back again with another ink review. One of the things I love about this hobby is making new discoveries. Uh, new pens, new inks, new brands, even new companies. And today I have something that checks three of those boxes. I have some inks to share from a fairly new brand by the name of Monarca. I'll be focusing on one of the inks, but showing you all nine varieties of ink that they offer. Uh, Monarca is a brand based out of Monterey, Mexico, and is the store brand of the Octande Stationery Store. Uh, Octande opened back in 2014 and has grown to a couple of locations and is the largest stationery and fountain pen store in Mexico. Uh, they carry many of the world's best ink brands, but realized that there really wasn't a quality Mexican ink brand out there on the market. So in 2020, they began development of their Monarca ink brand. Uh, Monarca is the Spanish word for monarch, like the butterfly. So, in order to get a closer look at these new inks, please join me over here at camera two. So, here we have the Monarca ink. First of all, they come in these very cool boxes. Uh, and they're cool, interesting, just because it has some nice pictures on it. But then you can see the picture actually wraps around here. And for each of their lines, uh, the pictures represent all of the colors uh, that are in that particular batch. So let me go ahead and put just three of these. Now there's actually four, but they don't fit necessarily into the screen. So you can see that kind of makes a picture. Uh, and it represents a lot of the items uh, that are represented in the inks. And even a little monarch butterfly. This is what the bottles look like. They are 30 milliliter bottles. Uh, one of the things that is really interesting is that they come with this little wooden stand. Um, it has a pen rest on here, but what I find useful is that you could simply put the ink in here and then there's no risk of the ink falling over when you're inking it up. I will say that the neck on this uh, bottle is very narrow. So there's a lot of pens, especially larger ones that aren't going to fit in here. So you might need to take out the converter and actually fill up the converter and then put it back in the pen. Um, but uh, yeah, I wish the neck was just a little bit wider on these. In regard to the colors, here is Monarca Cenote. Uh, the Cenote in Spanish means like a cave with water in it. And you can see that this blue has a lot of sheen to it as well as some shimmer. Uh, then there is the Tierra Colorada, which means red earth. Then there is the Mar Caribe, which is the Caribbean Sea. Uh, then there is Arena Blanca, which is white sand. Uh, this was a color that was really popular from what I hear at the Baltimore show. Uh, then there is the Cardona, which is the fruit on the noble cactus. Uh, if you look at this box, it's the fruit that's sitting on top of that cactus. Uh, and then we have Nopal, which is that cactus itself. Uh, then we have Cielo Cruel, which is Cruel Sky. Uh, and then we have Manglar, which is the mangrove tree. And then finally, there's a special edition ink that is called Ray Jaguar, which is Jaguar King. Right off the bat, my favorite was this cenote. Uh, and so that's the one we're gonna be focusing on today. Uh, this is what it looks like with Bloody Brexit from Diamine. Uh, this is what it's very similar to that. This is what it looks like with diamine skulls and roses. Then we have the Krishna Pakaza. All of these are kind of a bluish inks with kind of purplish reddish uh, sheen to them. Then there is diamine purple rain. Uh, here it is with the kiwi ink trade colory purple. And here it is with the Ferris wheel press tanzanite sky. This is what cenote looks like on some 52 gram Tomoe River paper. This is a smear, uh, and then this is a Q-tip application and some drops. Um, you could really see, especially with the uh, smear and the Q-tip application, the uh, sheen as well as the shimmer that's in here, it really stands out on the uh, very heavy application on the drops. And then this is what the other eight colors look like. Um, some I care for more than others. Uh, this one was the sand that was really popular in Baltimore. Um, I really care for this Tierra Colorado, which is the red earth. It kind of reminds me of Franklin Christoph's Terra Firma, which is an ink that I would use a lot in uh, Arushi pens with uh, that had the Akatama Nuri finish, the kind of a reddish brown. Uh, the Cardona is really nice. That one has some really nice sheen and shimmer to it as well. But I think it's a nice selection of colors. 
So let's take a closer look at the Monarca Cenote. Up here up top, I'm using this 3.8 millimeter Pilot Parallel. You can see again, it has some really nice sheen uh, and shimmer to it. Uh, and But you can see that it, this one is rather saturated. With the different passes, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Uh, this is Rhodia 80 gram paper. Uh, I'd say the ghosting and bleed is medium on here. I did have a couple of uh, dots that came through, but then again, this is a rather high application that I put on here. Uh, I'd say the shade is low, it's rather saturated, and that the shimmer and the sheen is rather high. In regard to the pens that I'm going to be using today, um, the first one is the Pilot Vanishing Point, and this is in the gunmetal. And this was nice. This was actually a gift to me, and uh, they engraved it on here. So I thought that that was a nice touch. So first up, we have the Pilot Vanishing Point. And this is a fine nib. And next up is a pen from a company that is unfortunately no longer with us, and that is Denoble. And this is the Denoble Blue Phantom. Uh, it looks very similar to a Sailor King of Pen, in, uh, that uh, I just really like this pen. Um, it's a company that it was based out of Moldova. Let's see, this is the Denoble Blue Phantom. And this is a medium nib. Yeah, it's unfortunately that uh, they had to close up shop and who knows, maybe they'll come back at another iteration later on. I'd love to review this, but it's kind of a pointless to review a pen that is uh, something that you can never obtain and there really isn't many out there, but um, it is a very nice pen. And then finally, we have a pen from Pilot, and this is the Custom Heritage 912. So we have the And as you can see, this is a rather wide nib, and this is because it is a music nib. Uh, if you have never seen a music nib, you can see here that it actually has two sets of tines, rather, or it has, well, two slits rather than one. Uh, and it actually is very pleasant. This is my favorite music nib that I've ever tested out. So, in regard to a writing sample, growing up in San Diego, I crossed the border to Mexico many times. Uh, it's only about half an hour from downtown San Diego to Tijuana. Uh, you know, I would have lots of friends that would go over the border on the weekends because the drinking age was lower. That really wasn't my thing, but a lot of people did that. Uh, but I thought for the writing example, I would tell a little bit about one of my adventures south of the border. And what I said here is that when I was in seventh grade back in 1979, my junior high school Spanish class took a field trip to Tijuana. Yes, you heard that right. We took a field trip to Tijuana. Uh, the supposed purpose of the trip was so we could practice our Spanish in a natural environment. But in hindsight, the idea of taking a bunch of 12-year-old kids to a foreign country for a day was stupendously terrible. To this day, I am not quite sure why all of our parents signed off on those permission slips. Then here with the Denoble.
I said that when we crossed the border, uh, we exited the bus and we were told to go explore. Our chaperones literally opened the door to the bus, waved goodbye to us, and told us to be back at a certain time. There was no organized trip whatsoever. They literally just let us loose to wander around Tijuana unsupervised. Um, Twelve-year-olds in a very seedy part of Mexico, all on our own. Uh, a couple of friends and I pooled our money and we got in a cab. Uh, the cab driver didn't even blink an eye. Four 12-year-olds get in a car. I mean, he's basically like, where do you want to go, boys? Um, we did answer in Spanish, though, so we were indeed practicing our language. Uh, we had it take us to Avenida Revolución, which is the tourist center of the town with lots of shopping. Uh, we wandered around the shops. We were chased by some hoodlums. We broke into a high lie building. Uh, if you ever watched the 1980s film Adventures in Babysitting, it was kind kind of like that, where we went from one harrowing adventure to the next. But yet, somehow, miraculously, we made it back to the bus on time, as did all of the other members of our class who were scattered about the city. And then finally here with the Pilot 912. I had a little bit of skipping there, but that was more in how I was holding the nib. And what I said here was crossing back into the U.S., Border Patrol agents, along with their dogs, uh, searched the bus and discovered kids trying to smuggle illegal fireworks. Yes, the Border Patrol agents searched our bus and found a couple of kids trying to bring back fireworks. Uh, fireworks were illegal in California. I was not one of the kids. Uh, but this, this, this did result in everyone being taken off the bus and all of us were uh, patted down to make sure that we were not trying to smuggle any illegal contraband. So being frisked at the border checkpoint was an interesting end to the the day. But in the end, we survived and lived to tell the tale. But Mr. Sullivan, our Spanish teacher, uh, must have been the greatest salesman in the world to have convinced our parents to let him take us down to Mexico for the day. Uh, the late 70s were very much a different time than today. Okay, in regard to some of the other things about this ink, uh, I feel that the flow is medium. Uh, with the drying time, I found it interesting that for a fine nib that might dig a little bit deeper into the page, uh, that the drying time was deeper. But then with the medium nib that kind of glides across the top more, uh, that it was only between 10 and 15 seconds as opposed to 15 and 30. Uh, let's take a look at some water test here. And while that's soaking, let's take a look at the chromatography. You can see here in the chromatography, it's always fun taking a look at this. I enjoy doing this. Uh, and you can see how it's pretty much a solid blue that just separates out in color, in gradients, as opposed to a combination of a number of different colors. This is what the chromatography ended up looking like. And you can actually tell it's interesting because you can see here how the shimmer stays at the bottom. The shimmer doesn't travel with the rest of the ink. In regard to the waterproof test, this doesn't contest to be a waterproof ink, uh, and you can see that it doesn't necessarily hold up to that. But like I said, it doesn't uh, profess to be. Uh, I said here that Monarca Cenote is a well-behaved deep blue purple with a healthy sheen and shimmer. 
Uh, I think that the whole Monarca line is really interesting and something that uh, we should take a look at. Um, it's an interesting addition to the marketplace. At the present time, they're being carried by Van S Pens, as well as a brand new retailer by the name of Amarillo Stationery, which is a one that focuses on Latin American and Mexican products. Uh, some of the inks are $24 and some are $20. And then that special edition Ray Jaguar is $29. But all of them are something that I feel are worth taking taking a look at. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.